So I want to make sure everyone is having a good day. I want to make sure everyone has what they need to succeed. Because I've been in positions where, you know, you're set up for failure. My focus is always to alleviate that. I think it's not about shining, right? It's not about, oh, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to, no, because that's what your team is there for. So how do I make you shine? How do I make you grow, succeed, and be where you want to be? And then I get fulfillment from that. Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Welcome back. We're here again. Oh, uh, man. We did it. We are here again. Yes. and They and keep allowing us on these couches. They keep it Y'all love it. <laughs> well, look, y'all. Welcome back to the You Heard Fearless podcast. Yes, I yes, am yes. Marcus, one of the test engineers here at Fearless. I'm Richie, another test engineer here at Fearless. And we're here to bring y'all another conversation, another really good conversation. So... We have someone amazing here to speak to you all. But Always. Just to make sure we can hear them, we got to do this mic check really quickly. Let's, 100%. Let's, let's get it. Let's, 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 let's try that. On you. Okay. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two, one, two. On to you? Who? Mic check. One, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two, one, two. What's on you? Hey. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two, one, two. That's cool. Look at that. See, that's how we do it. I know you guys can hear her. <laughs> well, let's, Look let's, at that. Let's hear about her. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Adekolu. I'm a scrum master. Uh, I'm not a scrum master. Ooh. See? Ooh. Ooh. But, you see? But, <laughs> see? You see? You see? You see? We, we took her back. <laughs> yeah. we, we it's it's her because back. of us. It's we because took, of we, us. We took Michelle she back. She was no. our scrum master. She was our scrum yes, master. Yes, yes. <laughs> way back, throwing it way back. I am a program manager now okay. here at Fearless. I okay. started as a scrum master, yeah. but now I'm a program manager here. See, so since Welcome you up. already broke the ice, yeah. you let the people know that you were a scrum master at some point. Let's give us a little bit of your journey from scrum master into program manager mm -hmm. and whatever else it is that you got going on here at Fearless. Oh, well, yeah. So I came in as a scrum master, okay. love the people, started with the SBA project, um, eventually moved on to the mock, and then this opportunity to be a program manager came on, and I jumped on it yeah yeah so what most people don't know is i just follow michelle basically you know um <laughs> i was on sba with michelle and she left and i went to the mock with michelle and then she left again so what's next for me oh gosh you got to tell me. See, we're we're gonna find, I'm, I'm gonna, waiting for it. We're gonna he gonna he's following you. I'm following you now, so we're going to figure out how to make it work. But no. Yeah. All right, so let's take a quick step back. And you said that you started off as a scrum master in SBA. So can you give us a little bit of background of what that entailed? And we're probably going to get into a whole lot more in that realm as well. Oh, yeah. So uh, before I joined Fearless, of course, yeah. you know, <clears throat> things were happening <clears throat> 2020. And uh, I, I saw this company, I said, oh, wow, I have to apply. So I applied, and I said, oh, you'd make a great scrum master. And then they called and said, oh, we need you. You're going to start next week, but we actually need you to start tomorrow. Can you start tomorrow? And I said, sure, why not? I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> so we can start tomorrow. And they told me about the project, um, SBA COVID response. Okay. And I was like, okay, I'm down. This is going to help the people. And um, I think I was on it for, was it a year and a half? A little over that? It was. Uh, it was over, definitely over yeah, a year. Uh, and it was just, it was awesome. It was really good. And then from there, um, I moved on to the Namak project, which is just, both projects are dear to my heart, um, of course. But it was just another area of impact. Okay. You yeah. weren't new to Scrum, though, right? Like. Were I you? was actually new oh, to wow. Scrum. So what you, resources did you utilize to, like, you know, so, get so, your fit in? So my case was a little different okay. because um, I had already been a BA. I had okay. already been a tester. I had already been a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I had been a program manager. Um, I'm not a program manager. Uh, product, product owner. Thank okay, you. Okay. I'd already been a product owner. So I knew what it was like, with the exception of coding, I knew what it was like. I had experience on every mm -hmm front of a scrum a team yeah so i could just wow carry it that way but you gra but you graduated 
with a biology major mm. and you still got all the experience of all those different pieces. I'm trying to figure out when was the first yeah, what, foot in the door. What, yeah, how did what you? Was the f- oh, yeah. okay. So the first foot in the door was um, I was working in a hospital and I was like, uh, yes. uh, I was talking to my, my then husband now, mm-hmm. boyfriend then, like, uh, I'm not, not, too sure. not feeling this, not too <laughs> sure. So I started looking, okay, what can I do right now? I had a lot of friends that were moving into the IT space. I said, okay, let me try this. And I started in um, tech support. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, and it was like right in the middle. So it was tech support for a medical based company. Right. Oh, yeah. So I could get the terminology and I just needed to know the software. Mm. And from there it just kind of built up like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I could be a BA moved on to that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I could do other things too. I think help desk, test support, those are great places to start. Yeah, great because place to start. You're in the field. You're talking to these users firsthand. And and I think that's something we get distant from. Absolutely. That's exactly how I started. Tech support first, yeah. then moving to testing. And Me too. Definitely with the help desk. Now I'm, here, now I'm here having conversations with you all. Like, look at that. <laughs> yes. Full circle. Transitions so quick. It does transition quick. Um, so with all of this transitioning and skill sets that you have, um, how did the SBA project impact you? You know, you said people first, right? You know, um, so how, how did it impact you, like, once you got into the groove of the project itself and all that we had to take on? Oh, I mean, it was, you know how they have, like, two degrees of separation? This mm. was just one degree, right? So I'm a small business owner. My dad was a small business owner. And then there were, like, gig economy people. Mm. And there are so many people that were impacted by 2020. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was like, okay, if we get this done, this is a first line of defense, right? To help them, to help their families, to help their communities, get them out of the situation that they're in where they're not able to bring in income, right? Mm-hmm. Or they're not able to keep, you know, their people on on staff, right? Which affects those families too. So that was really just like, wow, this is major. This yeah, yeah. is not just making headphones or something. Yeah. This is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So to be clear, so everyone knows, um, tell them exactly or as much as we can give about the actual program itself. Like what, what was it called so that they have an idea? Because, you know, it was it was really big work. It was noticeable work. It was known work. Yeah. Um, um, we want to let them know, you know, how much you actually put in some time into that assistance. So um, coming on as a scrum master, we had two teams, um, two S- two SBA teams, right? The first team was um, helping to create the PPP loan application. Mm-hmm. And this is what was going to help business owners apply to um, apply for PPP loans for assistance at the banks around them, the smaller mm-hmm. banks around them. Okay. Um, Normally, things like this would have been through paper or through super complicated systems. But this was something that was going to help not just the larger banks, but the smaller banks, too. And those people that don't have access to those larger banks. So there were, um, you know, community banks that were able to use the system, local, like rural area banks that were able to use the system so that they can get those Mm. loans processed quicker. That's a lot. So it gave... (laughs) Okay. That's a lot. More access on both sides. Absolutely. Oh, wow. It's very similar to a conversation that we had with Jordan earlier um, about this government as a platform, right? We took it from the paper piece and moved it into a more digital space, and the impact of what this (laughs) was to do is going to be really, really large and helpful across the board. And as you mentioned, you're a small business owner yourself, so... Is mm. this is like this is like hand in hand, right? Um, was it at that same time, or did the business come after? No, it was before. Ooh. Yeah, so we okay. were we were we were directly impacted. Okay. Yeah, we um I had just put in an application for a vendor table. Jeez. Oh wow. Two weeks before. <laughs> no, it wasn't two weeks. I think it was about a week. Probably the same week before, and then they said <laughs> everything is shut down. Yeah. <laughs> And then we got that email like, okay, this event is canceled. We don't, you know, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, what's next? Like public event, 22,000, tons of people. Baltimore Craft Festival, tons tons of people. (laughs) Yes. So so it was directly impacting like, because my my business at the time was 
customer, purely customer facing, dependent on large crowds, and events, and all those things like that. Physicality, yeah. So we were shut down. Sheesh. Yeah. Well, 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 now I want to ask about the impact on you from the standpoint of you as the business owner, but even being on the team, what did you recognize or get to acknowledge from having that, in the, I guess, in the inner scope? I mean, it's just about you're looking at it from the point of view, right? Mm -hmm. We're we're fortunate enough to be tech savvy, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people aren't. Yeah. There you go. Um, a lot of people, they, it could be business owners, but the level of understanding of finances or keeping things afloat, they yeah. may not have that, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially like older generations. And I was just thinking about it from that point of view. Yeah. Um, my dad was also in that situation too. So he was a... Um, he was a small business owner. He was also a gig worker. Okay. And he was shut down. So it's yeah. customer service. He was shut down. He had to stay home. But he didn't know how to navigate that process. Mm -hmm. So he would have to call me or call my older brother or something yeah. like that to try and figure out, okay, what's my next step? What can mm -hmm. I do? Yeah. So it, it was really important to get those things up. That definitely ties into a conversation of accessibility that we've been oh, yeah. really just bringing oh, yeah. to, the, to the table because – there's always going to be a population of people who are affected by a quick change Absolutely. and a change that's outside of their scope. And we know we, we do a lot of assisting with our older generation mm -hmm. in those areas. Yes. So um, it's always good to have a little bit of tech savviness around, <laughs> especially in today's times. Um, but the the actual program itself that was spun up that we assisted with in collaboration with the SBA, is the time frame was it's pretty quick, right? Yeah. So it's been said it took about like 10 days to get this thing going. Mm -hmm. So how was the energy around <laughs> yeah, around it's, it's getting that spun days, up? Or is it uh, 10 days, surprisingly? You know, it's a lot, right? It was a lot. <laughs> uh, sleepless nights, um, round-the-clock shifts. Yeah. We're all working there different shifts. shifts. So uh, <laughs> from, from my perspective, from my role, there were – Three scrum, there were two scrum masters and our passion coach involved. Okay. So at some point we had to take shifts. Like, okay, I'll be on from 12 to 6. Uh -huh. All right, you're on from 6 to 2. You know, just yeah. just yeah. like that. We, were, we had a war room set up. That yeah. Zoom link <laughs> was on 24-7. <laughs> People were coding. It's like, okay, do you need to take a break? Do you need to take a nap? Do you need some food? I can yeah. send you some food. Mm -hmm. But everyone had this commitment to get it done right they knew you know when you know like hmm. there's a lot of stuff riding on this, this yeah yeah this is not hmm. just this is not just about fearless it's not just about the company it's about the people, the people. that need this right now mm -hmm. so everyone was let's go let's go let's go all right yeah. i'm ready okay i just need to use the bathroom oh i just need to walk yeah. the dog i'm ready <laughs> mm -hmm. come back and got it done Camaraderie. It was it was a, a big coming to coming together type situation. Yes. We knew the importance yeah. behind it. Um and it's a huge impact, right? We're an impact company. Mm -hmm. And to be able to uh, be a part of that actually means something. Mm -hmm. You know. What were you able to leverage though? Like, uh how do I say this? In such a quick turnaround time, I'm sure some some parts of the cycle are probably compromised. Like you can't spend as much time discovering or maybe you can't spend as much time testing or what did you see you guys as a team leveraging the most? So I think everyone kind of leaned into their strengths, mm -hmm. right? So it, we could do paired pro like, is it paired programming. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of our developers at the time, they did have, they're very good. They yeah. were like oh, doing yeah. the MacGyver thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then um, we had a designer come on who, she wasn't initially involved in the first design, mm -hmm. but she was able to like quickly spin up um, version two. Yeah. And then we just kept building from there. Um, we also had a lot of the SBA folks involved. So they were mm -hmm. able to um, review as those, we went. Like, yeah. Like stakeholder kind or like Yeah, users. like sta okay. stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, they were able to review as we went. I think at one point in time, we were able to connect with a bank. Um, a local bank who okay. was able to um, come in and test the system. Yeah, user. Use, yeah, mm -hmm. user testing. And it's like, okay, how did how did you feel using this? Is it complicated? Is it intuitive? Yeah. What could make it better? Did it go through? We were able to connect that way. So Jeez. leveraging um, yeah. skills, everyone's strengths, connections as well. Communication. Communication. 
And then the handoff, like, yeah. was that smooth? <laughs> like, I, I think a lot of projects I've gotten a chance to be on, that position of handoff is, is kind of shaky because it's like, we know the system the best. So it's hard to give you full support yeah. and giving it to you entirely. How did that feel? Especially knowing that it impacts, you know, you tomorrow as a small business owner. I think the handoff was pretty smooth. Okay. Yeah, I think we kind of just worked into that system, right? So once we were able to get, and that's the part, the beauty of working in Agile, right? Yeah. So we were able to send out the first iteration, mm -hmm. and then other folks were able to take over and build on top of that. Once True. we had that solid foundation, handoff was pretty good. Okay. And then you're handing off then to the world. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. So, um, Hold on, before you guys no. continue, oh, make man. sure you ask chat questions. We'll make sure that Michelle gets to them. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure. That. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make sure Michelle gets to them. We'll, we'll, we'll send her all the messages yeah, and all yeah. that good stuff so she can answer all the questions. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I, Richie asked about like the things that you leveraged in the in the process. Um, was there an, like the vision that had to come about like how many, like he said discovery, but like within that process, how quickly did all of this come together? It was 10 days, a little over 10 days, right? So yeah. as soon as they reached out and they said, hey, this we need this, this is what we need to do, right? Yeah. Developers got to work. There was like brainstorming sessions and within hours they said, okay, this is what, this is what the prototype or, you know, MVP is going to look like. And we're literally building the ship as, <laughs> as, we're, as, as we're moving forward. <laughs> Information. Yes. Yes. Wow. Jeez. Oh, man. I know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what? Right? Yeah, I don't think about being in, in that. Yeah, that's um, – so for that to be your first, your first project here at Fearless, right? Like you came in the door literally ready to rock and roll. Sprinting. Um, <laughs> you're sprinting, oh, literally man. sprinting. Um, like how has that impacted you as a person um, and now being in your program manager position? It was a crash course. Okay. Uh, it was it was <laughs> definitely a crash course, but um, there was a lot of support okay. right around it. I think that's the most important thing. So when you have that support, you have that confidence that you can get the thing done, right? And we had that support. So like – um, Delali and John Foster, they would call, check up, join, join the, um, the, the war room, oh, make yeah. sure everyone was okay. Then we had Stephanie, who was our passion coach. Mm. She was also acting as a scrum master at the time, too. So we were the three on the shift, and okay. Jenny, too. We were all supporting each other, right? Mm. So I can't code, but I can send you food. Mm. You know, I can't do X, Y, Z, but I can connect you to someone that has insight in that. And that's how... One, we were able to get it done, but we also kind of built a bond around that. Yeah. And that's what's carried me through. So even being a program manager today, yeah. um, supporting, leading people, that's kind of where I took that experience and I yeah. apply it. All those right? transferable skills. Exactly. Yeah. Like, okay, if I know this person is good, they, they obviously have the skills. If I know this person is good, then I know that the work is going to be good. So let me kind of focus on them and make sure that they have everything that they need, right? So Do you feel like you came into that position? If you had good to question, uh, grab those resources, do you think you could? How would you leverage finding out uh, how do I get a subject matter expert for this? How do I get more insight on this side for the client? Or how do you leverage that? Oh, again, it's people around you, right? Yeah. So we have our practice managers mm -hmm. who have really good insight into their practice level skills, right? Yeah. So if we need a particular type of design or a particular type of tester that has certain skill sets for whatever technology we're using, mm -hmm. they have that. So I can leverage that knowledge. That makes sense. Um, also conversation, right? Yeah. So if you're always talking to folks and checking up on them and knowing, okay, where do you want to grow? Where do you want to be? What are you focusing on right now? Right. You know, react or, you know, Cypress or something like that. Yeah. So I know that as soon as another project comes up, I can call on this person. Mm -hmm. I can also talk to the other program managers who've worked with other people individually. So it's really about networking and leveraging that communication piece. Mm -hmm. and support. Do you feel did, like you've, I'm sorry, Richard. Well, honestly, good. Yeah. Did that, did that, get more difficult though being in the pandemic i know people are like 
or in the office, you could tap someone. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We need help like this. But when you're in on Zoom America, it's like, <laughs> I don't know who else is on Zoom. You literally started in yeah. Zoom America. <laughs> it was funny um, because everyone was still trying to be somewhat professional. Oh, pre- okay. Like, you know, people would. A hundred percent. Yeah, like they would wear button up shirts. Four cameras and, on. Yeah, and yeah like. <laughs> And I'm like, look, a notepad and just relax. Mm. Your cat is going to walk across the screen. That's OK. <laughs> You're going to hear my baby crying or mm-hmm. my son asking for snacks. Mm-hmm. That's OK. We're all going through this. right? Yeah. So um, one of my favorite things is just give each other grace. right? Mm-hmm. So all of the things are happening. Mm-hmm. So let's be comfortable. Wear your hoodie, wear your Sweats, I mean, be appropriate, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You can I'm have your cat it. on mm-hmm. your lap. You can have your baby yeah. on your lap, and we'll get the work done. Right? So. That's very true. Do you feel like you landed in the position that was made for you, right? So as we see you as, you know, we see you, we've seen the Scrum Masterpiece. We, you know, the beautiful kids, you know, oh. you, you <laughs> went through a whole pregnancy for the mock, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how you did that, but, like, you feel, I feel like you're in a position that you are supposed to be in. Do you feel the same? I do. Um, for the most part, yeah, I Y'all, do. did you feel that? Yeah. I do. Like, it was so <laughs> genuine. Yeah. It was really, it was right there. I felt it. The resolve. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm always a people person, so, but even before kids, right, I tend to lean into the nurturing side of things, right, and I've seen the effect it has on people. So I want to make sure everyone is having a good day. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure everyone has what they need to succeed. Because I've been in positions where, you know, you're set up for failure. Mm-hmm. You don't have all the information. Maybe there's a bottleneck. Someone wants to control everything. I've seen that. You don't have all the tools, right? You can't cook without pans, right? So yeah. um, I've seen that, and I my focus is always to alleviate that. I think it's not about shining right it's not about oh i'm gonna be the best i'm gonna know because that's what your team is there for so Mm -hmm. how do i make you shine how do i make you grow succeed and be where you want to be and then i get fulfillment from that so that's the other piece like fulfillment servant leadership it is i think good morale is truly fuel like fuel to the machine that's true absolutely Oh, wow. I can I can be a witness to that. Um, we were delivered ice cream. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Michelle, Michelle delivered ice cream to all of us on the team. I, I don't know how. My scrum master. Yeah, but and it was some of the like greatest ice cream. ice cream of all that I've ever had. You and missed it by a week. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was everywhere back. I, then. My morale was, was up. I was yeah. here, ready to go at that point in time. So. Yeah. <laughs> so just to, uh, as as we tend, you know, we're we're. We could again. We could talk all day long mm-hmm. about these these things, um, but for someone that is looking to get into or get a start in in tech and government, you know, what advice would you give them? I would just say have a conversation, right? Reach out to me. Re- the, the two degrees of separation. You know, someone that's already in this space. So yeah. just have a conversation. What is your day to day like? So from there, you may not like the coding piece. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't want to be a developer. But they've also talked about, oh, I have a Scrum Master. I work with a BA. I work with a designer. I work with an accessibility specialist. IT is so broad mm-hmm. that you can find your niche, right? And then you can also lean into your strengths. So ask yourself, what are your strengths? Do you like challenges? Do you like um, building things, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can do the research from there, but always start with a conversation. Conversation with who? A conversation with who? With yourself? No. Anybody. (laughs) Anyone in (laughs) IT, right? Okay. Ricky's like, hey, contact Michelle directly (laughs) and get your answers. Am I asking myself, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Well, you can start with that. Okay, okay. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you like to do? Do you like the people aspect? Do you like the coding aspect? Do you like designing are you are you a graphic designer yeah you don't have to limit Ask yourself to questions yeah you don't have to limit yourself to what you studied in the school yeah. right because oh yeah, yeah biology yeah, yeah. is oh, kind of and i think <laughs> <laughs> whoa that's, that's what i'm saying big time switch up yeah. biology experiences now you're in this tech experiences world. regardless yeah. yeah there's there's always benefit um 
I know one of the big things is we have a developer here who started in hospitality, mm. right? They started their management career in hospitality, mm -hmm. but it's transferable. Mm -hmm. So what do you like to do? How, how, how hard of a challenge do you like, right? That's fair. And then you could go from there. And there are courses. You see which mountain you're ready to climb. Yeah, there's so much you could do. Selfishly, from a business perspective, what did you, what did the pandemic force you to learn? Oh, adapt. Ooh. Adapt. Sheesh. <laughs> but that's so difficult. When you're a company, you're thinking about a specific solution to a specific problem. You're honing in on a, an expertise. How do you become flexible in that? Partnership. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always, so when it comes to adapting, there's always a different way you can approach a problem, right? Okay. But then you can always leverage partnership, too, for that. So in my small business, we went from large-scale events to smaller-scale events, right? Okay. And then we also went from, um, well, this was another one, instead of, at the time we couldn't do events, we moved to shipping. So we switched oh. the product. So instead of service, I mean, mm -hmm. it's all the same, you know, yeah. cotton candy, confections, all the things like that. So instead of service, we went to a product. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get up a website. Um, I think we used Wix, like Shopify version or whatever. Okay. But, um, you know, we were able to spin up a website and people were able to order, mm -hmm. ordered all the containers. People were able to order and I was able to ship. Yeah. Um, it went as far as California. Okay. Nice. Um, so, which, which is a... Amazing thing. We couldn't get to Canada yet, but okay. <laughs> it was, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how you adapt. Okay. okay. If I love spinning, how can I, how can I do it safely without mm -hmm. putting anyone at risk and people can still enjoy it. Yeah. They can still send videos of them trying it for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And I think, um, being flexible. Yeah. That's that. I, I, there's, how else can I, you describe being flexible? Like being <laughs> open minded. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what go. I'm looking See? for. Okay. Okay. Being that's open conversation will get you to the right place. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, okay. Did the post pandemic, uh, did it expand the business in a way? Or was it like, okay, let's, let's hop back to what we were doing? No, it, it expanded it in the sense that a sister business came out of it. Okay. So, um, you know, I love the product and everything like that, mm -hmm. but I also like the design aspects. That's so fair. decor, event planning. What are my strengths again? So event yeah. planning, organization. There you go. So the sister company came from that, and that's how it went. So before we go, just tell them about all the business. Give them the names. Uh -oh. They can find you real <laughs> I quick. I said drop it. Yeah. Drop it. And okay. then, boom, I know you've done it before on, in this platform. We got some new couches and seats for you now. <laughs> so go ahead and drop it real quick before we go, and then just let them know. Watch, yeah. how, watch, how, watch how it take off. It's going to take Stop. off. Stop. Okay, so, <laughs> I am. so right now we're really focusing on events. Um, so that's, um, but you can find us at Frey Puff or Frey Fet, F-R-A-I-S-F-E-T-E. -E. Um, that's where, on Instagram, you'll find us there. Right now, the biggest, next biggest step is my YouTube channel. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going back. You know, we talked about it. Yes, yes, so I'm yes. going back to YouTube. Um, I don't know if I should drop it. But <laughs> <laughs> we're going to drop it yeah. at some we'll point. They're going to find it. We're going to yeah. make sure they we can find start. it. You can ask her on LinkedIn. There you go. <laughs> yes, I'll yes. send Ashley's it. answering all your questions. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Well, Michelle, we thank you, thank you so uh, much. for your service, for your impact, everything you've done since yes. you've been here. Um, is there anything you want to mention? Any shout outs? Is there any PM perspective you didn't get to address? No, I think the biggest thing is just give people grace. Mm -hmm. I'll always end with that, right? You yeah. don't know what is going on on the other end of the screen yes. or the other end of the office, yeah. right? So just give people grace. It's very true. It's easy to get into monotony. There it is. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Michelle, Michelle. we thank you. Yeah. Everybody who's tuning in, we thank yeah. you all again. We out.